Praise God. Well, amen. Let's pray. Father, as we get into your word this morning, we're so excited, Lord, for what's coming up. We are the generation that will see the return of Jesus Christ. And we're excited. I don't know about them, but I'm excited. And I'm ready. And I believe you got great things. For this King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who we celebrate in Christmas, is coming back. Not as a little baby. He's coming back as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As the Lion of the tribe of Judah. To rule and reign. Yes, we're sick of all the evil that's going in this world. But Father, I'm so thankful that Jesus is coming back. And he will take over this earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we get into your word, give me utterance. Give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I hope I don't get interrupted with this message because I might. <laughs> I, I started a little mini-series last week and, and, and talking about... You sound really muffled on the thing. It's not coming up? No. All right. Let's see. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Can you hear me now? All right, can you hear me? In fact, make sure the, these are off. Go ahead and turn off the, the monitors. Amen. How's that? Can you hear me? Okay? All right. All right, I guess I'm, I'm going to be evangelizing now because I got the mic. You know, you know how the evangelist got the mic? is like, I'll come here to preach. Ah! No, just kidding. No, no, that's fine. They, they're lowered it and stuff. Amen. So I want to continue the message I started uh, last week. And we, last week he talked about Jesus is your love. And we went into Revelation where he says you've lost your first love. Don't get so, you know, you know, when I think of, of Christmas season, I think of love, joy, and peace. And it seems like there's a lot of love, joy, and peace. But how many know there's not love when there's division in the, in the home? There's not peace when there's strife. There's not joy when maybe you've lost a loved one. But in the midst of it, though, we got to remember it's Jesus who's our love. It's Jesus who's our, our, our joy. It's Jesus who's our peace. So today I want to focus on Jesus being your joy. So no matter what you're going through, Jesus can always be your joy. Amen. That's where, in other words, He's the one where you can find your happiness and your excitement. Look at, let's go to Luke chapter 2. You're familiar with this. Luke chapter 2, the, the Christmas kind of story. But um, Luke chapter 2, after Jesus was born... In Luke chapter 2, let's start reading in verse 4. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son. And what? I like this. I, I've preached on this before. He, you, you want a present? Here's your present. Wrapped. <laughs> Come on now. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes. The present God gave you came wrapped in swaddling clothes. And laid him what? In a manger. Why? Because there was no room for them in the end. Amen. Now, now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord what, shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. But look at verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you what? Good tidings of what? Here it is. Great joy which shall, will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the... Uh, there it is, wrapped. Again, there's that word wrapped. He's your Christmas present, right? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth goodwill toward men. Again, focus, focus on verse 10. The angel said to them, do, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you what? Good tidings of what? Great joy. Jesus is good tidings of great joy. Not just joy, but great joy to all people. Amen? 
It's so easy to get caught up in the distractions of doing things for getting ready for Christmas and miss out the true joy of Christmas. Like I said last week, just like Jesus is your first love, and, and the way you get back to your first love is remember. Rem Jesus said, remember from where you have fallen. And do the first works. What was the first works? Well, when you fell in love with Jesus, you had a hunger for the word. You had a hunger to be in church. In fact, you showed up. I don't know about you. Like I said last week, I showed up early to church. Whether it was Sunday morning, Sunday night. If we had a guest speaker Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we were there. We were there early. Because we were hungry. We were in love with Jesus. Right? And then... Notice Matthew 2.10. Even the wise men, look at, put, put Matthew chapter 2 verse 10. When they saw the star, notice, they rejoiced with what? Exceedingly great joy. So even the wise men, wise men still follow him, right? Today, right? They rejoiced with what? Exceedingly great joy when they saw it. Now why don't you go to John chapter 15 verse 9. Look at this. John chapter 15 verse 9. So in the midst of everything that's going on with Christmas, this is a simple message, but it's just a reminder. Who's your joy? The gift you get under the present? No. Jesus is, is, is really truly your joy. He's the joy of Christmas. Look at this. John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father loved me, Jesus said, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. What, is, what, is, what does Jesus mean, abide in my love? In other words, focus in my love for you. Because as you do that, then guess what? It'll be easy for you to love Him. We love Him because He first loved. So when Jesus is saying abide in His love, if you'll focus in His love for you, He says, I have loved you just like my Father has loved me. So Jesus was loved by His Father, so He's given that love that He received from the Father to you. Right? Then He says in verse 10, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. In other words, when he's talking about abide, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in here, man. I'm focused on how much He loves me. He's, he says, He's said, I'm, you're my chosen and I love you. And he's, I'm focused on His love and therefore I love Him in return. And so, and notice about Pastor, what are the commandments? John says it in 1 John what the commandments are. Believe on the Lord Jesus. This is His commandment, John says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another as I have loved you. Amen. That's it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and love one another is His commandment. Now let's keep reading. Look at verse 11. These things I have spoken to you, listen, that my what? Joy. Come on now. That, now, your joy? Jesus said, my joy. The Bible says the Lord, you know, the Bible says that, he, that Jesus was anointed with joy above His fellows. That means to me, Jesus was the most joyous person on earth. A lot of times we see pictures of Jesus, you know, people have drawn up, we see him all serious and whatever. But according to the Bible, he was the most joyous. He was, he was, he was full of joy. Full of the anointing. Amen? But, but again, you know, we see these movies made and they think, well, you know, he's, you know, he's got to be serious all the time. Oh, I believe Jesus was giggling with those kids when he picked them up. I believe, you know, he was just like you, like you know, when you see little kids, and the same way you would, right? He was full of joy. Notice what he says. He says, uh, the things I've spoken, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be what? Full. full. That your what? Joy may be full. I want to focus on these things. Notice, notice this. I want, I want you to focus on verse 11. He says, he says that, he, I, I want you to what? He says, I've spoken to you these things that my joy may remain in you. So you could say, Jesus' joy comes through His Word. Why? Number one, so that Jesus' joy would remain in us. Right? So Jesus has spoken His Word so that His joy will remain in us. Amen? Look at Jeremiah 15, 16. Let's look at that a little bit. Jeremiah 15, 16. How many know God's Word is so precious? Without His Word, oh my goodness. We have nothing to stand on. Like Pastor Lucy was saying. Amen. The Word became what? Flesh. And dwelt among us. That's Jesus. Jesus is the Word incarnate. Right? 
But notice what Jeremiah said about the word. Your words were found. And what does he say? See what you're doing this morning? You don't realize it. But right now we're feasting on the word of God. That's why you come to church. Not to get brownie points with God. It's so that you could eat of God's word. It's so that you could partake of his word. Feast on his word. Why? You need spiritual food. And notice he says, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the what? What was his word? Come on now. The joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Amen. You know, my, my, his word is becoming more bold than me about his return. And, I, and I'm even saying, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. I want you to come Lord Jesus. Amen. Pastor. Oh, you, you know, hey, John says it in the book of Revelation. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Yes, I know God's waiting for people to be saved and whatever, but even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, and the reason God hasn't come yet is because He's long-suffering and patient, waiting till everyone come that you know He's booked to come in. But let me tell you, time is running out. He does have a schedule. The earth lease is about to run out. God leased this earth to man for six thousand years, six days. He made He made everything in six days, and He leased it to man for. A, Peter says a day it was like a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. That's one way to understand end times prophecy. You got to understand that to the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand. So everything in the Bible that you see is type and shadows. Of, so God from the beginning told us how long man would rule this earth. It's six thousand. Well, guess what? But pastor, it's already past two thousand. I know, but how many know our calendars are not correct? We are off in our calendars. So we don't really know. Even the Jews in the Jewish calendar, the way they have it, it seems like it's still another 200 or whatever. No way. That is not correct. Because it's been two, almost 2,000 years since Jesus came. Right? And we're already in, in 2019. He showed up, what? He, he lived right into 30 and then and died and was crucified in 33. So even if there's a delay and we get to 33 or whatever, that's exactly 2,000 years. From the time of Jesus. So we know that Abraham showed up in 2,000 years of history. Jesus showed up in 4,000 years of history. Amen? Showed up in 4,000 years of history. Did you know that? Guess what showed up in Genesis in the fourth day? The Son. Jesus showed up on the fourth day. The Son of God. God has put the end from the beginning. He lets you know what, he, what He's going to do from the beginning. It's a schedule. We're at that time frame now. That's why I believe with all my heart we're at the end of that time frame. And Jesus will be coming. We might not know the date or the hour, but we will know the season. So the closer I'm getting, my joy is getting more, I'm getting more excited. Why? Because He's coming back for us. But notice, put that again. The word, this, I, ate, I ate them and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name. O Lord of hosts. So notice, Jesus' word becomes our joy. In fact, can you put that in the NLT for me? In, in, in the NLT for Jeremiah 15, 16? When I discovered your words, I devoured them. I love that. They are my joy and my heart's delight. Come on now. Is God's word your joy and heart's delight? You know, have you, you know, you know kids sometimes, they, they have to eat a little bit of food before they get used to it and it becomes better. The more you eat of God's word, the more it will become your delight. Amen. I have found that out. Sometimes I may not feel like reading, but then I get in there and I start reading more and more. All of a sudden, I, I get in a, a hunger, more hunger for it. But you've got to start somewhere. You've got to start reading it. And you'll develop a hunger. Pretty soon you'll desire it more. It'll become your delight. And you're like, you're like I've got to have my word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? gotta have my word notice notice uh, uh, Isaiah 61 Isaiah 61 in Isaiah chapter 61 this is the the scripture that Jesus spoke in Luke chapter 418 when he was in Nazareth where he said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach this gospel but notice what he says in verse 3 he sent me to console those who mourn where in Zion to give them beauty for what ashes and the oil of what? Joy. joy for mourning. Glory to God. The oil of what? Joy for mourning. 
the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. Some of you that have lost loved ones, don't you realize you should be excited if Jesus is close, that means you're going to see your loved ones soon. So, so, so put a smile on your face. Every day that passes, you're one day closer to seeing your loved ones. Come on now. One day closer to seeing your mom or your dad. I'm, I haven't seen my dad in 50, what, 15, 16 years? I don't know when the, what, two, 16 years? I haven't seen, it's been a long, and the other day I got to thinking, you know, I, you know, I haven't thought much lately about him, but, but man, I'm looking forward. I haven't talked to him in a, such a long time. I'm looking forward to it. Amen? My mom too, of course. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him. But that's why we got to be joyful in the midst. I'm not saying, look, I'm not saying that you can't feel certain things, but always remember. Remember, go back to the Word. Amen? Let the Word encourage you and bring joy. joy. Notice the next verse. Go to verse 7. Verse 7 of the same chapter. Verse 7. Instead of your shame, you're going to have double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double for their trouble, you could say. Everlasting joy shall be what? Theirs. Amen. Amen. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Look at, go to down to verse 10 and 11. Look at this. Verse 10 and 11. I will, therefore, come on. This is for us right here. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because and my soul shall be what? Joyful in my God. Why? Because he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself. Oh, glory to God. I, we should be joyful. Why? Because the Lord has given us, right, a, a garment of praise for the Spirit. He's given us the, 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 the gown of righteousness. And, and he says, like, like a, a groom with ornaments, or as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Next part. Is there any more? Verse 11. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Listen, how is that going to happen? He's coming. Amen. He's coming. Yes. All this evil that you're seeing is going to be done away with soon. Those that ask, well, how, how can God allow this to happen? How can God allow the famine over here? Listen, this is temporary. You've got to understand, there's also a devil. Amen? And he stealed, he, he robbed, he's, he's the prince of the power of the air. He might be influencing the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And we're going to be leaving this world. Yes. Right? Yes. So don't be discouraged. You're seeing the evil that's happening in the world. It's coming to an end soon. It's coming to an end soon. Amen? Don't be discouraged. It's coming to an end soon. In fact, can you put... Uh, 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 oh, no. Yeah. Let's go to John 17. John 17, 13. Look at this. Look at what Jesus says here in John 17, 13. But now I come to you. This is the prayer he's praying the night before he was crucified. And notice what he says. But now I come to you. He's talking to the Father God. And these things I speak in the world, that they may have what? Why did Jesus speak these words? That we would have His joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen. Jesus wants His joy fulfilled where? In us. Amen. I'm not used to this thing because my, my, hand, my hands want, want to move. <laughs> my hands want to move. <laughs> Amen. And so, and so notice, I love this. Can you put this in the CEV and then the Amplified? Look at verse 13. Put this in the CEV and the Amplified. I'm on my way to you, Jesus says, but I say these things while I'm still with, still in the world, so my followers will have the same complete joy that I do. Amen. Jesus is saying you're going to have His joy. Look at the Amplified. The Amplified really amplifies it. Right? And now I am coming to you, He says, I say these things while I'm still in the world. Why? So that my joy may be made full. And what else? complete, what else, and perfect in them, that they may experience my delight fulfilled in them, that my enjoyment may be perfected, come on now, in their own souls. Listen, you see that? 
He wants his joy perfected in your souls. I maybe we used to sing that song. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus or joy of Jesus in my heart. Right? Remember you sing that? Yeah. Well, we need to notify our faces. It's in our souls, it's in our heart, but we need to let it out. Amen. Let's just let it out. Amen. Listen, in their souls, that they may have my gladness within them, filling their hearts. That's amazing. I want you to close your eyes and think about Jesus' joy in your heart. Do you think Jesus is sad? Jesus is, is right now in the presence of the Father. He's with his daddy. Do you think Jesus is sad right now? In fact, do you think Jesus is probably getting excited because he knows he's about to come back for his church? I want you to imagine Jesus being excited. I, he, he says, and he says, man, my joy is yours. My joy is yours. Imagine Jesus like a husband, almost ready to go get his bride. Imagine Jesus, you know, thinking about, it's about time I'm about ready to get my bride. Yeah. Come on now, I don't know about you, but I was single for four or five years before I married my wife. And I, ha, ha, I was ready for the honeymoon. <laughs> Glory to God, I couldn't wait for the wedding to be over. Mama knows, let's go. You guys party on. We're going, we're going to our honeymoon. Yes. Amen? Yeah. I couldn't wait to be alone with my own wife. Right? Because I loved her soul. I still love her, right? But here's, here's the point. Same way with Jesus. Joy is welling up and within them because time is short. Time is running out. Amen. It's wedding bells are about to ring. Come on, ring them bells. He's about to come get his his church. So I know I was excited. I was like, come on, let's get this wedding going. Amen. Yeah, Hosanna, right? There. <laughs> Amen. Driving down the road, going hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> so Jesus what did Jesus say I'm giving you my word that my joy would remain in you oh but notice the next thing he says and that your joy in verse 11 John 50 11 says and that your joy would be what full see Jesus' joy now becomes your joy amen he becomes look at Psalm 16 11 remember I told you to close your eyes and meditate about Jesus being, being with his father Look at what Psalm 16.11 says. Psalm 16.11 You will show me the path of life. In your presence is what? Fullness of joy. Amen. Fullness in Jesus' presence is what? Fullness of joy. Listen. Talk about pleasure. At your right hand are what? Pleasures forevermore at your right hand are what pleasures I think CEB says it's a celebration it's a celebration celebrate Jesus come home right listen you teach me the way of life in your presence is total celebrate good times beautiful things are always in your right hand Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm not the only one that uses that. I, Jesse Duplantis in one of his meetings, that's what he does. He puts that song on, but they, you know, Christianize it. Amen. Celebrate Jesus. Come on. Amen. Why? Because Jesse Duplantis came out of the music, rock, you know, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See, the enemy had us, and he, but, he, you know, God's bringing the musicians out of it. Amen. Now look at this. So notice, in His presence is what? Fullness of joy. And I believe that's going to happen in these last days. I believe as we get closer, there's going to be a joy unspeakable. Because look at this. Look at this. Look at Acts 13.48. Acts 13.48. This is when Paul's preaching the gospel of the grace of God. This is his first missionary journey. Here's his message he's preaching. And after the message, the Gentiles get so excited. Look at verse 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad 
Amen. The gospel should make you joyful and glad. Amen. And they glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. Look at the next verse. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews, they get in envious, stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city. They raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas. And they expelled them from their region. But look at verse 51. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them. And they came to Iconium. But look at verse 52. And the disciples were what? Filled with what? See, when the gospel is being preached, it, there should be some joy. Amen. No, I'm sad and I want to be sad. <laughs> well, God's not going to force you to be joyful. Amen? Amen? But yet notice, those disciples were full of joy and of the Holy Spirit. Listen, joy in your heart is a measure of how much the Holy Spirit is moving. It's the dipstick. Joy emanating out of you is the dipstick of how much you're allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through you. Come on now. It's the dipstick. Listen, in fact, look at, let me give you a great example. And here's somebody that should not be rejoicing. Look at, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Here's, here's the Macedonians. These guys were poor. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Look at verse 2. That in a great trial of what? Affliction. Affliction. These guys were being persecuted. They were poor. Listen, the abundance, the abundance of what? Their joy. In the midst of their poverty, they had an abundance of joy. I believe they didn't stay poor long because they gave to Paul. They were the only church that was giving to Paul's ministry and I believe God blessed them mightily. And the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. They're saying, man, in the midst of being so poor when they started out, he says, they were so full of the joy of God in them that they just gave generously. It didn't matter. That they, had, they didn't have much, but they gave it anyway. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And Paul later says, abound in this grace of giving. Amen. So you see, in fact, can you put this in the TPT? Thank you very much. Beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace of God poured out upon the churches of Macedonia. Look at this. For even during a season of severe what? You might be going through a season, this Christmas season, of severe difficulty. But listen, look at these people. And tremendous suffering. They became even more filled with joy. From the depths of their extreme poverty, super abundant joy overflowed into the act of extravagant generosity. In the midst of what you're going through. Look, we've had a bad year. It was a bad year. We had some bad stuff that happened to us this year. But in the midst of this year, I still got the joy of God in me. In the midst, the devil can, could try to steal my family, steal my life. I don't care. I have the joy of the Lord on the inside. Amen. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the, in, when, when the Cardinals lose. Praise Him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when the sun's lost in Mexico, yes, yes. by one point. <laughs> so I rejoice. Los son, los son, los sons. Amen. <laughs> right. But let me end by saying this. I'm, some scripture I'm going to share. We're not in it yet, but you know what I'm saying. Let me in. We're, we're coming in for a landing, but it takes about 10 minutes. <laughs> so, because I, I don't want to leave you, I want to leave you. Well, how, Pastor, how can I stay filled? I want to talk about it. How can I stay filled with Jesus' joy in spite of my circumstances? I want you to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. How can I still stay filled with joy in spite of, of my circumstances? Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1. Look at this. First, oh, 
I'm in the wrong place myself. Here it is. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 4. To an inheritance. You got an inheritance. What? Incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. So no matter what you're going through here on earth, you got an inheritance. Come on now. Incorruptible. Maybe you've been robbed. But you got an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Do you have your reservations? Amen. Amen. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God. Even God's power is keeping you through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Look at verse 6. Here it is. I'm going to show you the key. The key here coming up. In this you greatly what? Rejoice. Though now... For a little while, come on, anybody got, for now, now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Amen. Anybody here been grieved by various trials? But what, is it, what does Peter say though? In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith, see what's the enemy after? He's after your faith Amen. in Jesus Christ. Being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, it may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But look at verse 8. Here's what I want to get to. Look at verse 8. Whom having not seen... Come on now. Have you seen Jesus? Whom having not seen, you what? You love. Though now you do not see him, yet here's the key. Here's the key, staying full of joy. What's the key? Keep believing, yet believing you what? Rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Oh my. Oh my, 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 my. Though now you don't see him. Yet believing, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Wow. Now put this in the Amplified, verse uh, 8 in the Amplified message, and then the TBT, and then we'll see where we go from there. Without having seen Him, you love Him. Though you do not even now see Him, you believe in Him and exult and thrill. I found my thrill. With inexpressible and glorious, triumphant, heavenly. Come on now. Heavenly. See, the joy we have is a heavenly joy. Why? Because this world's about to end. The way this world's going is about to end. Jesus is coming back. My Savior's coming to get me. My Savior's coming to get you. Going to get your loved one too. And we're going to meet Him in the air. Amen. Ain't no grave going to hold my body down. <laughs> when I hear the trumpet sound, I'm coming up out of the ground. Because ain't no grave going to hold my body down. For you, for you country western folk. Look at message. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you kept, why? Because you kept on believing. You'll get what you're looking forward to. Total salvation. One more, look at TBT. Now TBT is doop, doop, like a trumpet out of here. Look at this. You love him passionately, although you don't see him. But through believing in him, come on, here's the key. Here's the key to staying in full of joy. Through believing in him, you are saturated with an ecstatic joy, indescribably sublime and immersed in glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm full of joy. And I got the victory. Amen. Full of joy. And got the victory. Hallelujah. Are you seeing that? What's the key to staying full of joy? Keep believing. Let the joy of God come out of you. Amen. Keep believing. We're, listen people, we're about to enter a dimension 
where what you read in the scriptures in the Old Testament is going to begin to happen today. Those that say, where's the God of Elijah? Come on now. Where's the God of miracles? We're entering that dimension. We're about to, we're entering that time. Amen? We're entering that time. We're starting to see it in little phases already in different parts of the world. But God's going to turn on. The closer we get, it's going to be turned on. And I, I believe right before we get raptured, it's going to be so strong. There's going to be a major harvest of people that are going to come in. And then, ta -da! and we're out. Yes. You think I'm kidding. I'm not the only one that thinks this way. You know why I believe this? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, The Bible says the graves were opened and those from the Old Testament came out of their graves when he rose and went into the ho homes of their loved ones and appeared to many. Yeah. Amen. So I believe when Jesus said greater works you're going to do, we're going to see that. Yeah. See, you know what's happening today though? Some people are trying to do those greater works in their own ability, in their own power. But it's only when the Spirit of grace the anointing comes in a mighty way that we're going to see him that way. No man, there's going to be not, a, there's never going to be a church big enough to hold the people that are going to want to come in when this happens. But anyway, it's okay because time is running out and we're just going to get as many people saved, whether here in the church or out there, we're just going to get as many people saved. Some of you are looking at me like, this is a dream, dream that I'm, but I'm telling you, I'm, God never does anything until he first reveals it to the servants of prophets. Amos says, God does not do anything until he first reveals it to the servants as prophets. Amen. God speaks it first, what's going to happen before it happens. So when it happens, you'll know God had already said it would. Amen. You mean, you, you think that we're going to be limping into glory? You think the church is going to be like, oh, hurry up, Jesus, get us, because I'm about to fall. Help. Help. You know. <laughs> no. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. Full of joy. Full of power. The anointing will break the yoke. There's going to be people delivered from bondage. Delivered from sickness. Miracles. Asher is going to be running back and forth. Uh, other miracles. People are going to be raised from the dead in our midst. Anybody want to die right now? I'm telling you, don't die right now because we might have to raise you. You know, I'm saying that you think, some of you think, well, you're being pretty bold. I believe that. Don't, if you die right now, you're not going to die because we're going to have to raise you. Yeah. So don't die here in the church. <laughs> if you're really ready to go and you want to go be with the Lord, don't die here. <laughs> Look at this. A couple more scriptures. Rom Romans 15, 13. Yeah, I need one of those uh, letters that says, please do not raise me. I want to go to be with Jesus. <laughs> right? Those medical, medical ascent, <laughs> please. It's like Smith Wiggle. That's what he did. Smith Wiggle raised his wife. She had died. And she's like, let me go. <laughs> once, you see, once you get a taste of heaven, you don't want to come back. Once you see heaven. Amen. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of all hope fill you with what? Here it is. Look. With all what? What's, God, what's the God of hope going to do? He's going to fill you with all joy in peace in what? How do you stay full of joy? In believing. You stay full of joy by keep, keep believing. Keep speaking what you believe. Amen. 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 Remember Hab Habakkuk 3.18 says, I'm going to joy. Yet, I'm going through all these issues, but yet I'm going to joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. Amen. And then James 1.2, that's why he says, count it all joy. When you're falling through various his trials. Why? Listen, people, that's why we've been so attacked so much. Yes. I'm going to tell you, the enemy this year tried to shut this church down. 
He really did. And he, and he came close. I said tried. He came close. Amen? I'm still here. You're still here. We're still here. I ain't going nowhere. We having church. We ain't going nowhere. Oh yeah. We having church. We ain't going nowhere. Stomp. Remember that? All I know I want to do is stomp. Amen? That's what the enemy tried. He tried to destroy us. But it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work. I'm still here. You're still here. And when things really start happening, watch the multitudes that will be here. Amen? And we'll have to show grace towards them. Because we know, they're, they, they, didn't, you know they weren't moving until they saw God. You know what I'm saying? They're moved by what they see. But we're rejoicing because we believe. And Jesus said, blessed are you, even though you have not seen me, because you have believed. Ta ta Tommy baby was like, unless I see the print of his nails, unless I will not believe. Come on, Tommy baby. And Jesus said, Tommy baby, just come over here, Tommy. And he says, oh, he goes, my Lord, my God. Well, it's easy to say my Lord, my God when he's right in front of you. But Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet they believe. Oh, you're blessed. You're blessed. Now, another thing, Acts 20, 23, and 24. Keep running your race. Keep believing how to stay full of joy. Keep running your race. Uh, keep, keep believing. Second thing, keep, keep running your race. Acts 20, 23, and 24. Here's Paul when he was running his race. He says, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me. No matter what you're going through, you got to be like Paul. None of these things I'm going through move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. So that I may... Listen, that's the other thing. If you're, if you're focused just on your life, on your problems, you can get down. God has a purpose for you. God wants to... You're one of the people God's going to use to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Who do you think He's going to use? It's you! Listen, listen, and some of you that have been, had ailments or whatever, guess what? When the anointing, it's going to be gone. You might, Pastor, I can't do the, my knee. And, no, 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 you don't have to worry about your knee. When the anointing, be, you're going to be like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, yes, I'm going to go. You watch. Ooh, glory to God. You watch. Listen, it's going to happen. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with what? Joy. With joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And then finally, Jude 24 and 25. Jude 24 and 25. Keep trusting that God will present you in His presence with joy. Notice this, Jude 24 and 25. There's, no ch there's only one chapter, so it's verse 24. And 25. Jesus is your joy, it says. We have it? It's acting up? It's being silly? Well, look at that. Let me go there. I'll, I'll find it real quick. Look at your Bibles if it's not up there. Here it is. It's, it's Judah's by Revelation, right? Right next to Revelation. Look at verse 24. Now to him who is what? Able to keep you from what? See, he's going to keep you from stumbling. And to present you what? Faultless before the presence of His glory with what? Exceeding Come on now. Exceeding joy. Oh, glory to God. See what I'm saying? That's why my joy is beginning to increase because it's getting closer. Amen. Right? Verse 25. To God our Savior who alone is wise. See, He's going to get... At the end times, only Jesus is going to get all the glory. Be glory and majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. So keep believing, amen, that Jesus is your joy. Amen. Stay filled with the Holy Spirit by continuing to believe. Amen. Remember Romans 14, 17 says, uh, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. So during this Christmas season, you're focused on the tamales. As awesome as the tamales or menudo or whatever. No, the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. John 16, 22. You want to put that up? John 16, 22. 
How, what, what are you singing? Oh yeah, righteousness, peace, that's right. We've sang that. Yes, righteousness, peace. That's the kingdom of God. That's right, righteousness. Sing it, sister Patty. Love the kingdom. It's a different. And you want to be a part of the kingdom. That's. Oh, holla. <laughs> Amen. That's an old song we used to sing. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. What, what scripture did you say? John 16, 22. John 16, 22. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again. And your heart, amen, will what? Rejoice. And your joy, no one will take away from you. Amen. No one. Amen. Amen. No one. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. Father, we're thankful. Let's stand up and just give God thanks. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord God. Oh, we rejoice in you. I want the praise team to come on up. We're going to sing a, a, a song here real quick before we end. But Father, we're so thankful for your joy. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our joy during this season. And not just this Christmas season, but throughout this new coming year. In 2020, may we have 2020 vision on Jesus Christ. May 2020 be, uh, our vision be focused on Jesus Christ. Our joy, our love, and our peace. Thank you, Father, for being so good to us, Father. Thank you for so being so wonderful. Father, help us to, to focus on your love, on the grace of Jesus. Help us not to keep our eyes on our circumstances, but on you. Let your joy well up within our hearts, Father. No matter what we're facing, we're, we're going to make it because, Lord, you're on our side. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. And we adore you for all that you're going to do this coming year. In Jesus' mighty 